Hi, I'm Brian Russell, and I want to talk with you about self-awareness and growing as a friend, spouse, a leader. One of my favorite writers is Peter Rollins. He's a philosopher from Northern Ireland, and he does a lot of teaching with parables. And he tells a parable that he calls the parable of the four pints. And it's about a guy named Seamus who every Thursday goes into an Irish pub and drinks four pints of Guinness. After some time goes by, and this is a weekly occurrence, the bartender strikes up a conversation with Seamus and asks him what's going on. And Seamus says, well, I have a father and I have two brothers and I don't get to see them very often because they live all over the world. So I always come here and I imagine my, uh, the four of us drinking a pint together. And so years go by and Seamus is doing this every Thursday and the, the bartender always has his four pints of Guinness waiting for him. But then one day, Seamus says, oh, I'm really sorry, I'm only going to need three pints from now on. And the bartender says, what's going on, Seamus? And Seamus says, well, my father passed away. So it's just going to be my brothers and I drinking from now on. So they're on, the bartender always has his three pints of Guinness. And this goes on again for some time. And then after a couple of years, Seamus comes in, oh, I'm really sorry, I'm only going to need two pints from now on. And the bartender said, oh, I'm so sorry, Seamus. Did one of your brothers pass away now? And Seamus, no, no, it's nothing like that. My doctors told me that I need to stop drinking. That's a great story, right? It's about uh, having a blind spot in our lives. But as persons that are, are, are trying to lead out of a place of love, um, we still all have blind spots, right? So we want to find, is there a way that we can work out in our lives, that we can interact with most people that we meet each day out of love and not a, a love that gets distorted by our shadows in our lives, our dark places, those places where God's grace hasn't got into? How can we open ourselves up to get more self-awareness? Well, let me talk about a few things that have, that have helped me as I've worked on this in my in my life. The first thing is I, I use a journaling practice and you can look at another video called five minute journal that's really helped me. But one piece of that is every single day I try to be really attuned to how my body feels, especially my stomach or I get a lot of if I get stiffness in my neck or between my shoulders or even if I have a headache. I try to look at that physical symptom as a sign that something's bothering me. And in my journal, I try to write down as honestly as possible the things that may be bothering in my life. And the key is to be honest. And I've written down some things that I really would be embarrassed to share with other people, but these were things or persons or events that really upset me. And what I do is I write those down in my journal and then I write about them as a way of sort of releasing that. And that's helped a lot to open me up. And so I don't bring that junk into my interaction with other people that have nothing to do with that. I've also found that having deep personal relationships is critical here. I'm a, I'm a member of a small group where we can speak truth to each other, but I've also tried to have long-term friendships. And there's a couple guys that know me really well and they can tell when I'm out of whack and they can speak to me. Uh, my I'm blessed to be in a wonderful marriage, and my, and my wife and I, we have this agreement that we share really openly and deeply the things that are bothering us uh, about uh, um, our children, about relationship, about things at work, and we're able to really share and be transparent. And that's been a formative practice that's enriched my life because I can share my struggles with a person that loves me unconditionally, and that's, that's a, a blessing. So try to forge deep personal relationships. I also read a lot and widely, and I like to read books that work on my spiritual formation, my psychological awareness of things, and, and personal growth, and a couple of the resources that have really helped me recently. I recommend, if you haven't looked at books like this, would be books by Peter Scazzaro. He's got a whole collection. This is called Emotionally Healthy Leader. He also has a great book that's for really for everyone, whether you're a leader or not, called Emotionally Healthy Spirituality outstanding book and he helps us to look at our dark side so that we can lead and live out of our best self, not one that's just wounded in various ways. Also towards that end, I really like Leadership and Self-Deception, a book on how we can interact with others. It has this great title, Getting Out of the Box. 
and that helps us to be aware of our own perceptions and how we engage other people. A book that I don't have the hard copy, it's on my Kindle, is called Leadership Gap by Lolly Daskal. Uh, I'll have all of these books, bibliography for these on my website. If you want to check out the post on brianrussell.org, it'll be in the notes. Uh, but Lolly Daskal, Leadership Gap, really good book. Daskal's book is based on Carl Jung's archetypes. And what Daskal does in her book, Leadership Gaps, is, he looks, is she looks at the different types of leaders that you have using these archetypes and then talks about them in terms of the strength that each type brings. But then here's the key piece. Every strength has a shadow side that can sabotage the strength. And so part of growing in self-awareness is recognizing the types of strengths that you have through your leadership archetype and then minimizing and taking action against the shadows that can creep up with these things. Moving on past Jung, there's another useful tool that was rooted in his research but was developed later on called the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. Uh, and the Myers-Briggs gives you your type based on several different polarities, extroversion, introversion, sensing, intuition, thinking, feeling, and then judgment and perception. And you can learn many things about yourself by taking a test, and I'll make some links to some free online resources, and then doing some research. And all you have to do is take your Myers-Briggs type and put it into a search engine, and you can find all kinds of resources that will talk about how your particular type interacts with other types, but also how our your particular type functions in leadership situations, in relationships, in work settings. If you can read through your Myers-Briggs typology, especially how that works in relationships and the way that we lead, uh, you can see where the gaps are. And then you just need to critically assess and own those places where others don't perceive us the way that we perceive ourselves. And that's ultimately what self-awareness is, right? Uh, God wants to create us into the people that we were created us to be and craft us and mold us and put grace in our lives and get all the junk out of our lives. And becoming more self-aware is a way to open ourselves up to more of God's grace so his love can flow freely um, through us, from us, to other people as we seek to be his hands, his feet, his mouthpieces, ambassadors of his abundance to every single person we interact with every day. Again, I'm Brian Russell. I'm your professor for life. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.